Good morning. Welcome to the forecast discussion for September 18th, 2013. Of course, it's 9 a.m. And we start off pretty chilly throughout the Philadelphia and New York City metropolitan area. The northern interior ranged from the mid to upper 30s for lows this morning. They've rebounded into the upper 30s to mid 40s over the interior. And along the coast, not much warmer. Temperatures basically in the Mid to upper 40s just to the north and west of the major cities and upper 40s to mid 50s along the coast. Mid 50s pretty much over Long Island and New York City metropolitan area. Upper 40s to lower 50s over the Philadelphia metropolitan area. The overall theme here is that it is chilly out there as temperatures are roughly about 5 to 10 degrees below normal for morning lows right now. We also have high pressure and control, clear skies, light and variable winds. Temperatures today will rebound into the mid to upper 60s over the far northern interior, upper 60s to lower 70s to the north and west of the New York City and Philadelphia metropolitan area, and upper 60s, or should I say lower to mid 70s over the Philadelphia and New York City metropolitan areas and along the coast. So we're pretty much averaging slightly below normal, but at the trade off, it's at clear skies, comfortable weather conditions. So really it's a fair trade-off. And we have that trade-off because high pressure is sitting right over the Philadelphia and New York City metropolitan areas with clear skies, light winds, and seasonably cool conditions. Of course, as a result, not much going on in the radar here. And in the infrared satellite picture, you can see a high pressure system overhead with clear skies, but we have trouble brewing. Now, when we zoom out a little bit and take a look at North America, and we take a look at this disturbance here, this tropical disturbance over the Yucatan Peninsula, and this disturbance here that will eventually lead to a cold front marching across the country by about Sunday with scattered showers. These two are going to start to interact, and when they do, it will lead to the potential for but maybe, maybe a rainstorm on Tuesday, depending on how these two disturbances interact and how far north those disturbances get. So when we take a look at the latest model guidance using the Penn State EWOL website, using the uh, European model guidance, we start off with this afternoon, again, high pressure and control, not much going on. For Thursday and Friday, high pressure remains in control with scattered cloud cover. Winds will start to shift to the southwest around 5 miles per hour or so. And we'll see temperatures rebound into the lower to mid 70s for highs over the interior and mid-70s, possibly a few upper 70s over the immediate urban areas and along the coast. Again, pretty much near normal. So it's going to be rather comfortable, not much in the way of humidity. A nice end to this upcoming week. Saturday, high pressure will remain in control, but look for clouds to increase through the day with a few isolated showers possibly over eastern Pennsylvania by Saturday evening. Now on Sunday, that cold front will slowly move through the Philadelphia and New York City metropolitan area with scattered showers, possibly a few heavy downpours, but nothing really significant of nature. Temperatures again re remaining in the mid 70s for the most part, a few upper 70s possible in the Delaware River Valley, but temperatures pretty much averaging near normal. Now this is where it gets tricky. As far as where this disturbance, you can see that on the surface here, you can see that 850 millibars, a nice cutoff low right down here over the uh, Mississippi River Valley and moving into the Tennessee River Valley. How far north does this disturbance get? All models basically agree that this disturbance will develop and basically move towards the east coast. The question is, does it move more towards the northern mid-Atlantic or the southern mid-Atlantic? And the reason why that's an important question is because the further north this disturbance gets, obviously the better chance you'll have for rain. In previous mile runs, we've seen this disturbance basically track due east and basically develop off of the South Carolina, North Carolina coastal waters, producing periods of showers along the Carolina coast, but dry conditions over the northern Atlantic because of this high pressure system. New mile guidance is starting to shift this a little bit further north. And the reason why is because this trough is a little bit deeper, bump, pumping up this whole pattern and forcing this upper level low a little bit further north, leading to the storm track just a slightly bit further north. Now, regardless of whether this low pressure system tracks due east or northeast, you're going to see some strong easterly winds along the coast of New Jersey and over Long Island. 
So there's going to be the potential for some minor to moderate coastal flooding by Tuesday and also some very windy and overcast conditions. However, the question really comes down to whether it's going to be dry and cool and windy or wet and cool and windy, and that really depends on how far north this upper level low gets. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that over the next several days. We should have a better handle on what exactly is going to happen with this storm by about Friday, possibly Saturday. Otherwise, basically the pattern continues as such, with the upper level low exiting out into the Atlantic by the middle of next week, with improving conditions thereafter. But it's going to be rather interesting for uh, the early part of next week with the potential for some very heavy rainfall right along the coast. Well, that is your forecast discussion for today. Of course, I'm your meteorologist, Stephen D. Martino. Follow the latest weather information at nynjpaweather.com and nynjpaweather on Twitter and Facebook. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe out there.